While the old section of town is most important for discovering the many layers of history in Istanbul, the newer section on the other side of Galata Bridge has a more European charm with many fine shops, trendy neighborhoods, and a spectacular palace. If you're staying at one of the large hotels near Taksim Square, it's easy to walk 500 yards to the palace, but if you're in the old town, it's better to arrive by taxi. It's best to begin your day at the palace as it can get very crowded with long lines later in the morning. Dolmabachi Palace. After residing in Topkapi Palace for 400 years, the royal sultanate built the new palace at Dolmabachi in 1842 through 1856. After deciding that Topkapi was wearing out, and no longer met the standards fit for European royalty. This palace was built here around the mid-19th century. So it has three sections, as you can see inside. It has a section for the men, a section for the women, and a section for the, the ceremony. And you're going to see a lot of big chandeliers, I think, which are the biggest sh chandeliers in the world. And also you're going to see the big uh, Turkish carpets, which are all made of from silk on silk. Builders used over 10 tons of gold and 15 tons of silver to decorate the place, which has an elaborate style that blends Asian and Western influences along with a mix of French Empire, Baroque, Rococo, and classical themes. Some of the extravagant highlights include giant crystal chandeliers, silk carpets and drapes, original furnishings, vast murals, 600 paintings, hundreds of sculpture and objet d'art, decorated ceilings, and spectacular architecture throughout. Furnishings for the palace were designed by Sekhon, the same decorator who created the opulent interior of the Paris Opera. One is reminded of Versailles on steroids with an exotic oriental atmosphere wildly mixed in. Admission price includes the services of an informative palace guide who walks you through many of the 285 rooms and 46 salons, connected by elegant halls and chambers. The main entrance has a grand staircase lined with Baccarat crystal banisters, impressive Corinthian columns all around, golden carved decorations, and a glass ceiling from which hangs the world's third largest chandelier, weighing one ton. All the elements in this dazzling entry coexist in perfect symmetry and harmony. Passing through room after room is an exhilarating experience as you try to absorb the infinite details. Other decorative features include clocks, ceramics, detailed parquet floors, mirrors, balustrades, mantles, candelabras, and gilded fixtures. Just when you thought the decor couldn't get more outrageous, you reach the grand climax in the Grand Hall with its golden dome towering a hundred feet over a vast room decorated in a brilliant display of gold, crystal, and marble with tall columns and vaulted arches all around. The tour then continues into the ladies' side of the palace, which is similarly beautiful and crusted with gold everywhere. The palace stretches for 600 yards along the shore of the Bosphorus and is surrounded by vast gardens filled with flowers, trees, and shrubs that were gathered from all over the world. And then you're free to stroll through the lush garden terraces adorned with fountains and statues while enjoying views across the water. When finished, you can walk or take a taxi back uphill to Taksim Square and begin a one-mile meander through modern Istanbul. This neighborhood, called Pera, presents the European face of Istanbul that continues from Taksim Square along the main pedestrian road of Istiklal Kadesi, with shops and restaurants lining both sides of the street. If you are hungry, a cheap option is takeout kebab at any of the stands in Taksim Square or further along the main road. Some very good humble restaurants are tucked away down the little side lanes where you can have a tasty meal for a few dollars amid a friendly crowd of regulars happy to see you. 
they don't get many tourists in these small restaurants and while they might not speak much English they will feed you very well and make you feel great for being there now boisterous side streets are thriving with local shopping hanging out eating and trying to sell you things an old-fashioned tram runs along the middle of the street so if you would rather ride it's an easy alternative at the end of the pedestrian mall you can either walk down the hill to the water or better yet ride the tunnel a most unusual funicular tunnel went into service in 1875 making it the oldest subway in continental Europe and the world's second oldest just behind the London Underground which opened in 1863 12 years earlier originally it was pulled by horses until it was electrified in 1910 and then renovated in 1971 when the wooden cars were replaced by metal ones the line has only two stations and reaches just about 600 yards but it does offer a good service bringing people up and down the hill down to the Galata Bridge at the end of your journey back in the heart of Istanbul you might cap off your visit with a traditional tourist night out at a belly dance show there are many to pick from and this ancient Middle Eastern performance is good fun for everyone alternatively if you still have some appetite finish up your tour at one of the hundreds of great restaurants here in the heart of town you could take care of both together with the dinner show at the Galata Tower complete with a panoramic view looking back across the waters to the old town if you want to get a good overview of Istanbul you can go up in the Galata Tower where we're standing now and it gives you a commanding view across the water to the other side to the old town and you can see the the domes of the different mosques the blue mosque and the mosque of Suleiman the Galata bridge going across the straits here and it gives you an orientation and helps you understand the layout of the city now if you have time at, towards the beginning of your visit to Istanbul this would be a, a good starting point for you or even if you're waiting till the end of your visit as we're doing now it helps to tie everything together that you've been seeing on the ground this Galata Tower is an interesting structure in itself it's very ancient so ancient they're not quite sure who built it they feel it might have been started during the Roman times which would have dated back to say 500 AD 600 700 AD they're just really not quite sure and then it may have been uh, reinforced and further built up by the Venetians or by some other peoples it's a tower of mystery that's been growing along with the ancient history of the city of Istanbul and many of the features of the old town are visible from the tower it costs about two dollars to come up here and there's an elevator ride that takes you up to the top so it's really quite easy and it's a fun way to have a 360 degree look at the city